Julie, I was hoping you could review for us the concept of the SPRINT trial and the implications that it might have regarding early treatment for patients with SMA. Sure. So the SPRINT trial was actually the trial that was done for babies under six weeks of age who clearly needed to be pre-symptomatic to be enrolled in this trial. And one thing that I think that's interesting about the SPRINT trial is that it was pivotal and very important in terms of pushing forward the concept of uh, newborn screening for SMA and early treatment. The patients were divided into two groups, one with two copies of SMN2, one with three copies of SMN2, and they were about equally divided, 14 in the SMN2 copy number group, um, uh, and 14 and then 15 in the three copy number group. And interestingly, as these kids have been followed, and the study was fully enrolled, um, and the cutoff uh, data that we have is from uh, the end of 2019, we know that actually in terms of gross motor achievement, 50% uh, of the children who had two copies of SMN2 who were treated pre-symptomatically had normal gross motor milestones, 100% had normal fine motor milestones. In the babies that had three copy numbers, 100% had normal gross motor milestones and about 93% had normal fine motor milestones. All of the babies um, were continuing to grow and achieve, did not need to uh, have artificial uh, ventilation of any type, uh, and the majority had uh, nearly normal feeding without gastrostomy tubes and supplemental feeding. So again, in this group of patients who were treated under six weeks of age with single-time therapy, the outcomes were absolutely amazing. It still is important, as John was going through, the delineation of copy numbers of SMN2, again, to be able to look at prognosis, we still see that there's a difference between um, the populations of patients who have two copy numbers of SMN2 versus three copy numbers of SMN2. And so I think it's important to always keep that in mind. But overall, the achievement of these babies that are treated early on pre-symptomatically is absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Now, there was an integrated safety report that was released at the recent MDA meeting. It stated that as of March 8, 2019, 75 patients had received on Asemnogene across four clinical trials. Few deaths were reported deemed not relevant to treatment. Fever was reported in 40%. 11% experienced liver transaminase elevation, uh, which resolved with prednisolone and were clinically asymptomatic. And there was transient thrombocytopenia noted without clinically significant bleeding or bruising. So I think we've all mentioned the importance of discussing uh, potential for adverse effect and the role that the neurologist plays in helping to guide this discussion with the family, uh, reviewing risks and benefits and um, managing any potential adverse effects uh, that may occur, as well as continuing that interdisciplinary care that we have reviewed that is absolutely critical to the ongoing health of our patients with SMA. Despite any treatment, we know that that continued care and continued guidance um, within the clinic is going to be critical to optimizing the health of our patients impacted by spinal muscular atrophy. I'm incredibly hopeful for this patient population and their families. And, um, and I think that the future is bright with regard to um, more of the opportunities for treatment that we have.